happy that you are here. My name is Miss Susan. I am from the Crystal Lake Public Library and I am ready to go on an adventure. Are you going to come with me? You are fantastic. Hold on one second. I gotta get my adventure hat on. This is a hat from Peru. Do you see this? It's a beautiful straw hat. Keeps the sun out off of my head, but keeps my head cool. So we are about to embark on a wonderful journey around the world. This is our Passport to Adventure program. And we are going to be reading from this book called, This is How We Do It. And it is by Matt Lamont. He not only wrote the book, he illustrated the book, and he talked to several children from around the world, that can't even speak, around the world, and what they do in their average work day. Yeah. So we are going to learn about different kids your age and what they do on a typical school day. Fantastic. And the wonderful thing about this is that they're not going to be the same. They're all going to be so different. So in order to get this started, you should have picked up a package from the library. This has all of the things that you need for our program. So right now, I want you to open it up and I want you to dump it out. Ready? Here we go. One, two, three, dump. Here we go. Okay. So we're going to talk about all these things that are in here. First and foremost, look at this. This is your passport. We're going to talk about this a little bit more, but make sure you have your passport. Okay. Next thing you should have a set of four stamps. Do you see that? Well, these aren't really stamps. I see. I also need you to bring a glue stick and a pair of scissors. Okay. The next thing you should have is this wonderful packet. Here it is. It is called Passport to Adventure and it has the country of Peru on it. This is awesome. It's full of all sorts of extension activities that you can do to learn more about the country. So we will be talking a little bit about this. You should also have received this. We'll get to this in a little while. This is a game that they play, not only in South America, but in Spain, called Tripas de Gatos. It means cat guts. Oh, I'll explain later. Last but not least, you should have received some pictures. One picture is this. This is the Peruvian flag. It looks much different than our United States flag, doesn't it? And look at what is on the center of it. Do you see that? They have an animal, and it's actually not an alpaca or a llama. We'll talk about that. There's a special type of plant, and then this is like a cornucopia, but it means something else. We'll talk about that in a while too. And you should also have some other pictures. I have a beautiful picture here of Machu Picchu. This is an ancient civilization in Peru, and it is amazing. I've never been there, but would love to go. And then on the other side is another picture. Look at this. This is a beautiful area that you can hike to in Peru that has mountains that look like rainbows. Do you hear that sound outside? That's a wood chipper. We're just gonna ignore him right now. So that's all of your items. So first and foremost, I want you to grab your passport. Here's your passport right here. Inside is some information that I need you to fill out. Do you see this? This is an area that you can draw your face, your portrait, or maybe even your school picture can go here, whatever you want to do. But anytime you have a passport, you need to have some very important information. Information like your name, the day you were born, what nationality you are, where you were born. And you would also have to have the date that this was issued. So this is November of 2020. You'd have to sign your name as well. So if you want to, you can stop this 
video right now to stop it. And you can fill all that out or you can do it later, whatever you want to do. So today we are going to visit this wonderful country, South America. Now inside your passport, look at that. There are four different sections because with our Passport to Adventure program, we are going to visit four different countries and focus on four kids your age and what they do during their average school day. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we just arrived in Peru, you get to put your first sticker on here. So let's find our stickers right here. This is the one I want you to put on first. So grab your scissors and we're going to cut out your sticker to Welcome to Peru. Do you see that? Take your glue stick and glue the back of it. And we're gonna stick it in your passport. Here we go. Perfect. There's my first stamp. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to read this story this is how we do it, and we're going to focus on a wonderful boy named Ribaldo. All right, so this is Ribaldo's story. He lives in South America in the country of Peru. Now, he lives up near an Amazon rainforest. So let me grab our Passport to Adventure packet. I'll put my glasses on so you can see. So here is the country of Peru. He lives way up here in the mountains, okay? There is a major city right here called Lima, and there's another major city up in the mountains called Cusco. So this is where Ribaldo lives, way up here. So this is Ribaldo's story. My name is Ribaldo. I am also called Pirnillo. I am 11 years old. So his birth name is Ribaldo, but his nickname is Pirnillo. I bet you have a nickname. Sometimes your parents, your grandparents, your siblings may call you another name. It's a nickname. It means they love you a lot. I live with my mother, Sofia, there's his mother, my father, Isaias, and my brothers, Nayar, Nazar, I'm sorry, and Eber, and my little sister, Nieda. I also have four older siblings who do not live with us. So how many would he have in his family? So he has how many right here? One, two, three, four, five, six, plus he has four more siblings, seven, eight, nine, ten. He has ten in his entire family. How many do you have in your family? I live in a house that my father built in Los Naranjas a village in the Amazon rainforest. So think about where you live and where Ribaldo lives. He lives near a rainforest. Can you imagine all the different types of animals that are there? Not like the animals we have here. Look at his house. It is much different than the house that you live in, correct? Mm-hmm. Let's find out what goes on in his house. Let's see. Oh, so this is breakfast. What types of things do you eat for breakfast in the morning, hmm? Oh, I heard somebody say scrambled eggs or fried eggs, mm-hmm. What else do you eat for breakfast? Cereal, mm-hmm. Oh, pancakes, waffles, fruit, Mm-hmm, those sound wonderful. That's very typical of what we eat for breakfast in the morning. Now, Ribaldo, what does he eat? 
I have fried rice with chicken and peppers, sliced boiled plantains, hmm, plantains, and hot milk. What is a plantain, hmm? It's this item right up here, and they are in the banana family, but you cannot eat raw plantains. They do not taste good. You have to boil them or fry them. They don't taste a lot like a banana, not as sweet, but it is very typical of what Ribaldo has for breakfast every morning. And he has a nice cup of hot milk. Mmm. So let's find out how he gets to school. Maybe some of you take a school bus to school? Let's see how Ribaldo gets there. I walk next to the main road with my younger brothers and sister, and sometimes stopping to buy a snack of sweet bread from a fruit stand. So they're walking to school, and do you notice that the houses do look so much different than the houses that are around here? Mm -hmm. They must not live too far to be able to walk to school. Maybe some of you walk to school. Maybe some of you take a bus. But Robaldo and his younger brothers and sister, they walk to school. This is what his school inside looks like. Our school is very small. So the 14 kids, 14 kids in his whole class. Let's see. So 14 kids in the fifth and sixth grades study in the same room. We have different subjects each day and our school ends at one o'clock. So he is in fifth grade and they're combined with sixth grade and there are 14 students in these two grades combined. So I bet they work together and I bet that some of the older kids may help the younger kids or they may separate for a time with different lessons. And their tables and chairs are different than ours. And it looks like they just have their street clothes. A lot of kids who go to public schools will wear just street clothes, they call them, very comfortable clothes. And some children who go to private schools have to wear uniforms. So he goes to most likely a public school and he gets to choose the clothes that he gets to wear. Let's find out what else he does. Lunch time. Hmm. What do you usually pack for your lunches? Maybe some of you put it in a, uh, a paper bag. Sometimes you may put it in a lunch box or special lunch bag. Mm -hmm. So this is what Ribaldo eats for lunch at school. You might be surprised. So for lunch, he has white rice, beans, fried plantains, and coffee. He drinks coffee. Wow. Have any of you drink coffee before for lunch? Oh, it's very typical in Peru, very common. So that looks like a very hearty meal, a lot of protein, especially in beans. Mm -hmm. But this is a very typical meal that you would eat at lunchtime at school. Now, what does Ribaldo like to do for fun? Hmm? So here is Ribaldo. I play soccer with my two brothers and nephew. Nephew? He has a nephew? He's only 11 years old, but remember, he has four older siblings. So he's 11. He most definitely could have a nephew. One of his brothers or sisters could have had a child. So they may grow up to be almost cousins in a way, but he's a nephew. And so they play soccer by the main road. Is soccer a sport that you enjoy? I love soccer. My daughter plays soccer. And actually, in South America, they usually call soccer football. Not like the football that we have in the Americas, United States, but football because you play a game with your feet. That's what soccer is. So 
Let's see what else shall we learn about Rivaldo. Also, this is dinner time. My entire family gathers around seven o'clock to eat a dinner of white rice, boiled yucca, and stewed chicken with coffee to drink. Yucca. What kind of plant is yucca? Why you see a yucca is a type of plant that you would slice and boil or fry in order to eat. It's very typical and very prolific in the Amazon rainforest. So this is a typical meal that he has at dinner time. But do you notice he has a lot of the same things for breakfast, for lunch, and for dinner. He has a lot of rice, mm -hmm, and he has chicken a lot. And he does have a few variations with yucca and with plantains. Um, it's typical that this is something that is there quite often. It's very available. So it's different than what we're able to go to a store and buy whatever you want. But I know Ribaldo and his family are super grateful for what they are able to eat. And I'm sure on special occasions they have something much different. Mm -hmm. So this is their family eating dinner together. One of my most favorite things to do with my family because we try to have dinner every night together and talk about our day. So important. So what does Ribaldo do after dinner time? Well, he helps his brother with his homework. And do you notice how are they doing their homework? Look at what he has right here. That's a flashlight. In order for them to do homework at night, he has to use a flashlight to be able to have it bright enough for them to see. So that might mean they do not have electricity in their home. But for them, that's important. It's important to be able to do your homework with a flashlight and I'm sure they're grateful it's wonderful to be able to have modern technology, but it's also wonderful to be able to be together as a family. And what you have is, I think, just as important as being together. Mm -hmm. So he's being a great big brother and helping his younger brother with homework. Maybe some of you are big brothers and big sisters. And maybe you help your siblings with their homework. That's a great part of growing up, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, where does Ribaldo sleep? Hmm? Let's see. So he and his sister Nieda sleep on wood planks with three folded blankets for padding next to my sister. So they sleep on wood planks. It looks like a bed frame that maybe their father made for them and they sleep together. Isn't that wonderful? What a great big brother Ribaldo is taking care of his sister. I bet you she looks up to him very much. So, wow. That was pretty amazing learning about Ribaldo and how similar you and Ribaldo are together and how different you are? That's something to think about, hmm? How are you similar to Ribaldo? How are you different? We are all similar and different in so many ways, aren't we? Mm -hmm. All right, so now I want you to get your passport. Remember, this is where was our first stamp. We're gonna put a second stamp in. Which one should we put in? Hmm? How about the flag? We're gonna put in our second stamp because we learned about Ribaldo. We learned about what he does in his country of Peru. So add that to your passport. Here we go. Do, 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 do. Second stamp, passport to adventure. There we go. All right, so now we have something very special. We're gonna talk a little bit more about Peru 
And I wanted to first talk about the flag here. Do you see this? This is the Peruvian flag. And if you'll notice, it's two different colors. It's red and it's white. Mm -hmm. What color is our American flag? It's red, it's white, right, and it's blue. So they chose two different colors. Now, if you will see, look at that. There are three animals, not three animals, three distinctive things within their flag. Do you see that? The first one looks like a, right, it looks like a llama, but it is not. It is called, let me see if I can get this word correct, vicuña, V-I-C-U-N, with the tilde over the N-A, vicuña. It is the national animal of Peru. And they sure look a lot like llamas or alpacas, don't they? But they're much smaller. So there is also a tree on the flag. Do you see that? That is called a chihona tree, very typical in Peru. And then on the bottom is a cornucopia. Sometimes you see this, especially around Thanksgiving, but it also means prosperity. So that is what their national flag is. Mm -hmm. Now, I have something very special for you. Some of you know when I do story times, I have my buddy Ro, so I'm going to bring Ro out because look it, I've got a special bag from Peru. It says Peru. He has a special friend who wrote him a pen pal letter. He doesn't know anything about it. So let's call Ro. Let's find out where Ro is. Ro! Ro! <gasps> Hi Ro, how are you? Yes, I know, we're super excited. Mm-hmm. So, Ro, we have been learning about Peru and all the wonderful things about that country. And do you remember that I told you I had a special surprise for you? Yes, you have a new pen pal. You do. And her name, I forget her name already, but I have a letter inside of this bag. And we're going to find out who your pen pal is from Peru. I'm serious. So here, I got a letter here. This was a, actually addressed to me. You wanna hold that for me? Okay, you're gonna hold that for me. We're gonna pull this stuff out of the letter. Oh, stuck to you. All right, so here, Ro, do you see this? This is Lucia. Do you see Lucia? She is your pen pal. Look at, and she's writing that letter right there. Look at that. Let's see if I can put Lucia's picture. Can we put Lucia's picture right here? I hope so. Oh, super. All right, so here is, this is her postcard. Look, I can show you, because look at, there is a stamp from Peru, and it was stamped from Peru. Oh, look at that. So let's read this out loud to you, Ro, okay? It says, Dear Ro, yeah, I'll show you. She actually wrote. Dear Ro, hola, buenos dias. My name is Lucia, and I am so excited to have you as my pen pal. Are you excited? I am too. I live in the mountains of Peru, and on the front of this, you will see my mom by the mountain that we live close to. Her mom's on the front. Oh, oh look at that's her mother. And it looks like they live near Machu Picchu. That is an ancient Incan civilization. Wow. I am sending some photos of animals that live close to me. Please write soon your friend Lucia. Bro, you have a friend in Peru. How exciting is that? So she said she sent pictures of animals that live in Peru. Shall we look and see what picture? Some of these are gonna surprise you. Okay, so here's the first one. Humboldt penguins live in Peru? Believe it or not, they do. They migrate to Peru. They don't always live in Antarctica. 
Wow, I learned something new today. Let's see what else is there. Oh my, this is interesting, Ro. Wow, this is a bearded tamarind monkey. I bet you these bearded tamarind monkeys live close to Ribaldo in the Amazon rainforest. Wouldn't it be interesting and fascinating to have monkeys live in your backyard? Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, what else do we have? Ooh, another typical animal. A jaguar. Ooh, these are forest creatures that walk around so quietly. Mm-hmm. And they have paws the size of slippers. I always think jaguars and leopards and snow leopards look like they're wearing slippers. Mm-hmm. Wow. And what is the last one? Oh, this must be near the ocean. But this is, oh, I was corrected, an Amazon river dolphin. Wow. So they have dolphins in the river in the Amazon rainforest. Wow, we learned so much. In fact, we have to put another stamp in our passport. Mm -hmm. So Ro, would you mind if I put you up here? Okay, I'm gonna put you up here. Here we go, Ro. Okay, so let's see, where's my passport book? Oh, there it is, is this it? Yep, this is it. All right, so let's get let's see we have two stamps left yes these are alpacas alpacas are beautiful creatures and they use their wool to make wonderful clothing in peru and it's very very warm so i wish i had something made out of i wonder if this is made out of alpaca wool this actually came from Peru, along with my hat. My son visited the country of Peru, and he went to a remote village, very similar to where Robaldo lives. Okay, so there is passport stamp number three. All right, we've got one more section to go. Here we go. In your paper bag, you should have had a wonderful Passport to Adventure activity packet. Now inside, my friend Miss Jamie put this together and it is a whole bunch of extension activities that you can do on your own to learn more about the country. Now the first page is actually something you could finish on your own right now. The first one is draw and color the country's flag. Well, we learned about the country's flag and what the animals and the symbols were on that. You can do that right now. What do the colors and symbols mean? Hmm, I don't think I got into that, but you can research that some more with a grown up or maybe a big brother and sister or maybe even on your own. And then draw three animals found in Peru. We had that wonderful passport to adventure pen pal, Lucia, who sent us those animals. You can do that on your own. So Miss Jamie is going to now demonstrate a wonderful traditional Peruvian dessert. The recipe is actually on the back page of your Passport to Adventure program guide. And these are called, hmm, Manjar Blanco Bonbons. It sounds so good. It's a Peruvian dessert. So right now, Miss Jamie is going to show us how to make these wonderful desserts. Jamie, I'm ready to learn about how to make this wonderful dessert. Here we go. Hi, friends that are traveling with us. It's nice to see you. Thanks, Susan, for telling us about Rivaldo. And Ro, how cool that you have a pen pal. I am going to be showing you today how to make the recipe that's in the back of your Passport to Adventure book. So we're going to be making the Manjar Blanco bonbons and their Peruvian dessert. The caramel consistency is actually sometimes used in the middle of cookies 
or sometimes in other desserts, but we're gonna make a standalone bonbon today. One of the things that Miss Susan told you about was the plantains, and I just wanted to show you the difference between a plantain and a banana. They kind of look like mini bananas, but they don't really taste the same. And I have not opened one yet, so we're gonna do that together real quick. I went and picked these up at the store. They were over at Jewel, so if you wanna try some, you can. You need to cook them. We're gonna try some later this week. I don't think these are quite ripe because I think they're supposed to be the same color as a banana when they're ready. But if you look on the inside here, they kind of look the same as a banana. So we're going to fry some of those up later this week. My husband and I will try those out. And set these to the side and we're going to get started. With this dessert, you're going to need some evaporated milk, some condensed milk. You're going to need a pot to boil that in and stir it up. You're going to need a pan. You're going to need a bowl, a spoon, a tablespoon, we're going to need some cinnamon, some sugar pearls, and a timer. And you will also need some muffin cups. All right, let's get started. We're going to take our evaporated milk, pour it into our pot. I'm using a spatula to get all of it out. Some evaporated milk or condensed, sweetened condensed milk. And this is a little sticky. All right. And now we have to bring this to a boil on the stove. You will need an adult to help you with this part. Ready? We have our pot ready to go with our condensed milk and our evaporated milk. We're going to turn our flame on our burner to a medium high heat. About there. And then we're going to just put our pot on top and wait for it to come to a boil. Once it starts to boil, we're going to reduce our heat a little bit to a simmer. And then we're going to cook and stir it for 30 minutes and it does take about 30 minutes. It'll get darker and turn into a caramel color. It'll start sticking to the spoon after 30 minutes and then it'll kind of be in one big mass as we try to stir it. It'll kind of all stick together and that's when you know it'll be ready. And then we're going to have our glass bowl handy on the side so that we can put it in there to cool after it is ready. So we're just going to wait for it to boil for a few minutes and then we'll set our timer. Okay, we've started to boil. So now we're going to take our timer and start it for 30 minutes. And now we have to stir. As you can see, it's starting to darken in color a little bit. As I stir, it's starting to thicken up, but we still have a little ways to go. Okay, we're 15 minutes into this cooking and stirring. You can see that along the sides, it's starting to stick a little bit. We're just gonna kind of pull some of that down and stir it back in. The bottom is doing the same thing. So you can just kind of work your spoon around the bottom to loosen that up. And a little bit sticking to the spoon, but we're not there yet. We still are. We've got about 15 more minutes. Just keep stirring, you're almost there.
there's about 10 minutes left before it should be ready. to stick to the spoon and it is sticking to itself. Timer says five more minutes, but I think it's probably ready to put it into the bowl to cool. So we're going to turn the heat off. Okay, it's a one big mass, so we're going to stick it right into the glass bowl. Scraping our sides and getting as much as we can. And I don't want to touch it because it's hot. So I'm going to use another spoon. Get it all off. And now we're going to set our bowl aside and let it cool off for an hour. Alternately, you can put it into the fridge to cool about half an hour before I'll be ready to divide up and roll. Okay, it's been an hour. And we're cooled off and we're ready for our next step. All right, so we're ready for our last steps. You're gonna take your tablespoon and take a part of the caramelized dessert out. And you're gonna roll it into a ball. It's a little sticky, so be ready for that. I'm going to stick it in a non-sticking baking dish. You should be able to get 12 balls out of this. If you take a little cornstarch on your hands, it shouldn't be as sticky. roll 12 of those and then we're going to take some cinnamon powder and put it at the bottom of your pan and take your ball and roll it in the cinnamon powder and we'll stick it in a muffin cup
knife. Make a little asterisk sign on the top. A little decorative flare. And then you'll take a sugar pearl and stick it right. in the middle. And then your dessert is ready to try. Hope you enjoy them. Miss Susan and Roe, I'm looking forward to hearing about this game of cat guts next. See you later. Bye. I'm making some of those tonight. Oh, they look so good. Thank you, Miss Jamie. That was a wonderful, wonderful video. Mm-mm. I love learning about different foods from different countries. Don't you? That's fantastic. So we can put our fourth sticker in our passport. Where is my passport? I've lost my passport. That's so sad. Where did I put it? I've got all the stuff here. Oh my good gravy. Oh wait, is this it? No. Yes. <sighs> what would I do without my brain? Hmm. All right, so we can put this wonderful image of Machu Picchu on there and stick it in our passport. But your adventures are not done. No, they're not. Because with our wonderful Passport to Adventure packet, there are so many other activities that you can do when this program is done, okay? So I want you, I want you to learn about more about this country. It is a beautiful country. So make sure you use this packet. Miss Jamie's put so much time and effort into it. I mean, who, would, who doesn't wanna learn more about their country and the country that they're visiting? So I would highly suggest looking through this wonderful packet with your parents or your big sibling or maybe even on your own when you're a big kid, okay? So the last thing in our packet that you got would have been a game. It is called Tripas de Gatos, which means cat guts. Mm, what a crazy name. But this is a very traditional game that you play. So very simply, there are numbers one through 10, okay? And the odd numbers are red and the even numbers are blue. Now what you are supposed to do is connect number one, but you have to see, let me just take this off. Number one is here, and number one is here. So you draw a line from here to here. Then you find the number two. Where's the number two? Two is here, and two is here. So you connect those lines. But the trick is that these lines cannot cross each other. You can't cross over a line. You've got a snake snake around. So if you can see in this image, it gets more and more difficult. And it's not the same game every time you do it. You can do numbers one through five. You can do numbers one through 20 and it gets harder and harder to do. So this is a very typical game that I'm sure Bribaldo would do in school just to pass the time when you have some free time. Well, I am so happy that you and Ro joined us in this wonderful adventure to Peru. We're going to be visiting another country in our passport adventure program, but I wanna thank you for joining. I thank you for learning about a new country and we are super happy that you joined us today. So happy travels, and we will see you soon in another installment of Passport to Adventure. Bye-bye.